Greetings YouTube, it's Brain Damage Gamer here, and I have some more BDG news. Quantum Break, the first slash third person shooter that was all about time manipulation and was more or less a slight variant of all the other time related video games that have been released. But this one had live action type footage and had that whole feels like TV show-esque thing going on. This was a Microsoft Studios game that for whatever reason, they had decided to make exclusive to the X-Bone and to Windows 10, putting it on the Microsoft Store. Now, in doing so, they had also made that made sure that it was only running on DirectX 12. All these moves, everybody said, you know what, that's probably not a good idea, Microsoft. Microsoft says, no, this is the future. You will accept it. You will do it. And then their game didn't sell. And I'm pretty sure there was more than a few executives going, what happened? I don't understand. Why didn't people just do exactly what we told them to? Because that's what they're supposed to do, right? We're Microsoft. Duh. Well, turns out that not selling their game and not making any money was something that upset them. And eventually they decided to do something about. So it's now on Steam. After they had very carefully and repeatedly said it was not going to show up on Steam. It was going to stay on the Windows Store. Uh, it was back in February of 2016 that they repeatedly said, no, it's going to be a Windows Store exclusive. You won't be able to get it on Steam. And they made a couple of different remarks uh, since then, talking about how Valve's not really hurting by not having their titles on there. And that's true. If you don't put your stuff on Steam, it doesn't really affect Valve long term because there's so many other games on Steam. But Microsoft finally realized that they were turning away money, something that they don't like to do. Yeah, they put it on Steam uh, as of the 29th of September, and it's selling at a decent rate. Uh, it has slid off of the top sellers list already, though, so maybe a little too late there, Microsoft. They also gave it a $20 price dip. It's now $40 US. And from what people have been reporting, I personally haven't played it yet because, eh, there's a lot of games like it, in my opinion. But... What people have reported so far is that on Windows 7 and DirectX 11, it's actually running better for a large number of people, indicating that not only was going exclusive on the store a bad idea, going exclusive with DirectX 12 didn't exactly work out the way they're intending either. Interesting move there, Microsoft. Interesting move. Maybe just save yourself some time and hassle and actually get the game to sell by putting it on Steam and good old games maybe to begin with. Just saying. Speaking of Steam and software on that, I edit my show with Sony Vegas, as do many other people who are on YouTube and just edit videos in general. And the version I am using is 13. I have been looking at getting 14, but holy heck the price. Well, it turns out if I'd lived in Indonesia this last week when they decided to put Sony Vegas on Steam, they accidentally set it up to be sold for a dollar fifty US equivalent in Indonesian currency, obviously. Uh, I, and a lot of people in Indonesia just hurried up and bought the software. Uh, there's already codes flying around everywhere, people selling it for 10 times what they paid and still making a profit. It's an interesting situation. Uh, I'm not going to buy a code that way. That just seems like a very bad idea and a good way to end up getting yourself in trouble with Valve. But if you lived in Indonesia, good for you. You got a great deal. <laughs> And finally, we have some Elite Dangerous news. I know that a large number of the people on my channel came here because of my Elite tutorial videos, and I appreciate your views. I am going to be updating those videos here shortly. I am waiting for 2.2 to drop. That way I can go ahead and update the tutorial information with all of the new content as well, as opposed to having to add later on saying, oh, well, you know, here's just another video to add a little bit. Uh, there will be a complete update that's going to show a large portion of that new content as well. But in the meantime, uh, one of the more recent updates that Frontier has done, they recently adjusted the heat meta in the game. It used to be that you could actually overheat people so badly that it would damage all of their equipment without them even having to fire. You could use heat weapons and just roast somebody out of their cockpit practically. Uh, they've changed that. They don't want that to happen anymore. So no matter what you do to somebody with heat weapons, you're not going to exceed 95% of their heat is the current setup now. Uh, this was actually in an attempt to push back against some in-game terrorism being done by players. Players were literally flying around and just overheating the crap out of everyone they could get in reach. 
and kind of making it rough for a lot of people to just play the game. But by doing so, they forced Frontier's hand, and they've now had to adjust that back. So it'll be interesting to see if they make any adjustments in the future about that, if they're going to leave it the way it is now. Who knows? But in Elite 2.2 news as well, uh, the beta is currently live. Uh, I was a beta backer for the original beta for Elite Dangerous. I was not a beta backer for Horizon, so I'm not privy to what's happening in there directly. I can say from the information I've seen, it looks very interesting. Uh, the fighters, that's one of the big things that they're adding, is the ability for larger ships, certain ones, to have fighter bays and launch little fighters. You can control the little fighters just as if you were uh, controlling the SRV, which is definitely an interesting thing. And as such with fighters, you can actually hire fighters, where you can hire NPCs to do the fighting for you on your behalf. They do get a percentage of your revenue, though, so it's kind of a catch-22 there. You want to be careful with that. While you're... Personally, if you want to pilot a fighter, you can, but an NPC is going to take over the big ship, and that's an awful lot of responsibility, in my opinion, for an NPC. I'm not sure I'd want to risk that much money on an NPC running my ship. I'm waiting, as are many people, Frontier, get the multiplayer in. This would be perfect. You could have somebody riding shotgun with you, and it's like, hey, here come some people. Hop in a fighter and go break them up. That would be amazing at this point. We want the multiplayer. Where is it? But I will be throwing a link for the information I'm getting from Frontier uh, down below. You can go ahead and click on that if you'd like to see a little bit more of the information. The patch notes on this, it, it's just enormous, as they typically are whenever they do a big update. There's about three or four pages of stuff I've already seen, and it's just huge the amount of changes that they've made. Feel free to click below and take a look at that. I'm going to be trying to keep these at least bi-weekly, if at all possible, so keep that in mind. I also do have some additional videos getting ready to drop in this upcoming week. Uh, there's about four or five games I need to do reviews on, including some I actually received from the developers. Uh, don't worry, I will let everybody know whenever I have a developer copy. I do not let a developer sending me a copy affect the review scoring, though. If it's a bad game, I'm going to call it a bad game. So any developers out there, if you send me your product, expect an honest review good or bad keep that in mind please before you get your feelings hurt but as always i am the brain damage gamer thanks again for watching and game on